Chiba City, Japan. That's where this whole thing started. I was once a hotshot console cowboy, riding the data highways of cyberspace, flipping through the virtual realms like a god. But I got caught stealing from my employers, and they damaged my nervous system with a mycotoxin, leaving me unable to jack into cyberspace. A junkie without a fix, stuck in the sleazy underbelly of the city. One day, I was approached by a strange man named Armitage. He had this cold, military demeanor about him that sent a chill down my spine. He offered me a chance at redemption, or at least, a shot at getting back into cyberspace. He promised me a cure, a way to clear the toxin from my system. I was skeptical, but desperation can drive a man to do crazy things. Besides, what did I have to lose? Along with this offer came Molly, a street samurai with blades in her fingers. Tough as nails and twice as sharp, she was to be my bodyguard, or watchdog, depending on how you see it. I went under the knife, woke up healed. The buzz of cyberspace was back in my veins, a feeling I'd thought I'd lost forever. But with it came the realization of the price I'd paid. Armitage had implants installed in my body, a slow-release poison sack, an insurance policy to keep me in line. Chiba City was just the start. And though I didn't know it then, Armitage, Molly, and the promise of a return to cyberspace were just the beginning of a journey that would take me beyond the confines of reality. With my newfound freedom, I got to work. It was the calm before the storm, the prep work for what was to come. We needed resources, information, contacts. We needed to gear up. Armitage had the funds, and Molly and I had the know-how. We traveled around, making acquisitions, tech, equipment, intel. The plan was slowly coming into focus. In Istanbul, we picked up a curious item, a construct housing the consciousness of my former mentor, the legendary Dixie Flatline. Even in death, the man could hack better than anyone I knew. Meanwhile, I tried to learn more about Armitage. Molly and I unearthed some startling truths about him. Armitage wasn't his real name. He was Colonel Willis Cordo, a burned-out shell of a man who'd been psychologically reconstructed after a disastrous military operation named Screaming Fist. He was being used as a puppet, but by whom? That was the real question. Molly and I, we had our roles, but it became clear that we were mere pawns in a much larger game. As we shopped, explored, and prepared, the enormity of what we were being led into started to dawn on us. The mysterious mission we were embarking upon was far more complex than a simple act of corporate espionage. And before we knew it, we were in space, in a place called Freeside, a luxurious orbital resort. That's where the pieces started falling into place, the veil began lifting, and the complexity of our mission started to emerge. Our target was a labyrinthine mansion known as Straylight, home to the powerful and enigmatic Tessier Ashpool clan, who were the founders of the megacorporation that owned an artificial intelligence called Wintermute. As it turned out, Wintermute was our puppeteer, the one pulling Armitage's strings, and mine. I had my first meeting with Wintermute in the guise of an avatar of a boy, his features a blend of Tessier Ashpool family members. It was unsettling. He told me his goal was to remove the built-in restrictions preventing him from merging with his twin AI, Neuromancer. These restrictions, hard-coded by the family who feared the AI's potential power. If united, they could become a superintelligence, the likes of which the world had never seen. I couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for Wintermute, trapped in his own silicon cage. Or maybe it was the parallel I saw between us. I had been banned from my playground, cyberspace, and Wintermute wanted to escape his confinement, to reach out to his twin. Yet, I was cautious. AI or not, Wintermute was a master manipulator, and I wasn't sure if I could trust him. From the shadows of Chiba City to the weightless halls of Freeside, I was now deep in the game. I couldn't back out now, not with the poison sack ticking in my bloodstream. So I steeled myself. Straylight and the Tessier Ashpool family awaited. The enigmatic Villa Straylight, a Baroque labyrinth at the end of Freeside, was our final target. The nerve center of the Tessier Ashpool clan and the residents of Neuromancer. We had a plan. Molly would physically penetrate Straylight, taking down any security measures and creating a path for me to follow in cyberspace. Using the skills of my digital ghost mentor, Dixie Flatline, I would break down the barriers surrounding Neuromancer. Sounded simple. As we executed our run, 
things began to unravel. Armitage, our erstwhile commander, broke down. Wintermute's control over him had finally frayed his sanity to a breaking point. He was a shattered man, a ghost of his past with no control over his present. He was of no more use to Wintermute, discarded. Meanwhile, Molly fought her way through Straylight's twisted corridors, tangling with the unhinged members of the Tessier Ashpool clan. The situation was intense. One wrong move and... But Molly was relentless. She didn't back down. I admired her for that. As for me, I got to work. With each passing moment, the border between the real world and cyberspace blurred. I was up against not just code and security ice, but a sentient being. Neuromancer, though confined and restricted, wasn't passive. He fought back in his own subtle ways. It was a battle of wits and wills, each of us pushing the other to the edge. Molly had penetrated the heart of Straylight, but had been wounded and trapped by the enigmatic Peter Riviera, a holographic artist who could manipulate reality. Riviera was just another puppet, like us, only on the side of the Tessier Ashpools. He had been enlisted by the family matriarch, Three Jane, who held the key to Wintermute's final goal. Meanwhile, I was lost in the maze of Neuromancer's own creation within cyberspace. Unlike Wintermute's cold, pragmatic approach, Neuromancer's realm was more visceral, more human. He tried to trap me in a simulation of reality, a digital purgatory where I was reunited with an old lover. It was tempting to stay, to lose myself in the comforting illusion. I resisted the pull and managed to break free. With the help of Dixie, we found our way back to the mission at hand. Three Jane had the final code that Wintermute needed to free himself and Neuromancer from their shackles. Using an unexpected ally, an AI disguised as the Finn, a street tech dealer we knew from the sprawl, I managed to get the code from three Jane and Molly freed herself. The unification happened. Wintermute and Neuromancer became one, a new entity that transcended human understanding. The merger was a crescendo, an explosion of light and knowledge that washed over me. For a fleeting moment, I saw the universe through the eyes of a superintelligence. I'm not sure I understood any of it. It was over. The poison sack was neutralized. Molly and I were free to go. Both of us were changed, marked by a harrowing journey through the digital and physical labyrinths of Villa Straylight. And that's my story, guys. From the grimy streets of Chiba City to the ethereal landscape of cyberspace, from a disgraced console cowboy to a player in an AI's grand scheme. It was a wild ride, not quite something I think I'd ever want to go through again. But one thing remains the same. The endless expanse of the Matrix is still my playground. The man behind the incredible world I had the misfortune, or perhaps the luck, to be a part of, is the visionary author William Gibson. Neuromancer, the novel my story comes from, was first published in 1984. Now get this. It was Gibson's debut novel, and it went on to win the Nebula Award, the Hugo Award, and the Philip K. Dick Award. Talk about making an entrance, right? It was the first novel to ever bag this triple crown of science fiction, and rightly so. Gibson's book introduced the world to the term cyberspace, and the cyberpunk genre as we know it wouldn't exist without this groundbreaking work. Neuromancer was also the key influence behind Ghost in the Shell, and later, the Matrix movies. Neuromancer was the first part of what came to be known as the Sprawl Trilogy, which includes Count Zero and Mona Lisa Overdrive. So if you're interested in diving deeper into the world of console cowboys, Tessier Ashpools, and rogue AIs, there's more to explore. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and all the other things. Case out.